We have to realize that the Fox News Network is part of the uh, Rupert Murdoch empire. And like so many of the other great uh, media centers, like ABC, CBS, NBC, they're all in the hands of members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, Murdoch himself is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there is an agenda. Now, these people have an agenda, and they boast of it. It's not hard to find out what it is. The agenda is world government. The agenda is world government based on the model of collectivism. So we know that uh, Murdoch would not allow a consistent program uh, or movement within his network channel to exist unless it furthered, at least in his mind in some way, it furthered that agenda. So we know that this is uh, a rigged game to start. So how does that fit? So we've got the Fox network over here, which represents the right wing of this um, you know, right-left uh, paradigm. And we've got other, uh, other groups over on the other side, which I won't mention them because there are so many of them, but they represent the left wing of this paradigm. It depends on who you're listening to and which channel you're looking at. You get, you get this uh, cheerleader effect. These are the good guys on the right and everybody on the left is bad or the other way around, everybody on the, on the left is good and everybody on the right is bad. And this is no accident. The Fox network fits the role of being the cheerleader for anything on the right, which means currently at least the Republican Party. And uh, they do a great job of that. And when um, Glenn Beck draws the chart showing the lineage and the connection to the Communist Party and all of that, I have no doubt that that's true. But why doesn't he do the same thing for the Bush family, for example, showing its connection to um, the Nazis in Germany and the banking connection where they funded uh, the rise of Adolf Hitler? Why doesn't he do that? He'll never do that. And he would ridicule anybody who would bring it up. He would call them a conspiracy theorist or something like that. That's the role he plays, and he plays it very well. So in order to drive this ping pong ball or this tennis ball back and forth over the net, uh, going from Republicans to Democrats, Democrats to Republicans, you've got to have people who are expert at criticizing the other side. I mean, that's part of the game. You, you, can't, uh, you can't have an open and objective analysis on the news. Otherwise, people would say, hmm, I guess both parties are lousy. You can't have that because that's, uh, that's not how the game is played. So you've got to have people assigned to uh, expose and oppose the, the left and other people over on the left that oppose and expose people on the right. And so it's, it's necessary always to have people who can voice serious opposition and criticism of the other side. And it depends on who's in office I mean, because they're all bad. It's always easy to find something to criticize. They're all, they all lie. Uh, they all make promises they don't intend to keep and in fact do not keep. They're all um, involved in all kinds of scams and swindles and uh, there's dishonesty involved. I mean, it, that's politics. They all are like that. Maybe I'll make a reservation for 1%. I don't know, Ron Paul probably isn't like that, but uh, you just can't count on it being any other way. And, and so it's easy when one party is in power, they give them a little honeymoon time to let it be known that no, they're not going to change anything. And then the other side ramps up and says, oh, look what, the, what they did, how bad they are. And, and so the voters are thinking, oh, yeah, we got to get rid of him. And so they get all whipped up like they are now, uh, people on, in the Republican Party calling for take back our country, restore the Constitution. Um, uh, get the CIA out of our uh, bedrooms and off of our computers and so forth, all these good lines. They don't mean a word of it. Or they're just playing to the sentiments of the voters. And so all they want to do is bring now the next Republican candidate forward. And people won't even look too closely at the Republican candidate because they'll be so filled with, with um, uh, contempt and hatred for the Democrat, I mean, for Mr. Obama, they'll say, I don't care who we put in, anybody would be better than that. Of course, that's how Obama got in. They said, well, I don't care about Obama. I don't care what you say. Anybody would be better than Bush. And this goes back and forth. And Bush got in, well, anybody would be better than Clinton. American politics is the, is, is the politics of hatred. 
It's not who you love or who you like, it's who you hate. That's what it's all about today. And it, it's, a, it's a strategy that seems to be working pretty well.